Hi, this is Mike, WB4HUC, and this video is going to be a demonstration of the Tentec Model 302R remote tuning encoder. This is a standalone box that plugs into the back of the radio, and you can use this box, this uh, remote encoder, whether you're operating the radio in front panel mode or whether you're controlling it with software like I do. And I believe this. Uh, this control will work with the Jupiter, the Omni 7, and the Orion. And I use an Omni 7. And I run the Omni 7 using the N4PY Pegasus Plus software. And that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm not going to talk about uh, using it uh, standalone with, with just the radio when you're running the radio in front panel mode. Your, the operating manual for your radio will explain how to do all of that. Um, I just wanted to do a demonstration of uh, using it with the software. And it's not real hard or real complicated, but uh, this video is more to get the idea across of how handy it is uh, to use and the things that you can do with it that uh, are easier to do than if you're running the radio just from the front panel. So the first thing to do is, if you're not uh, showing it already, is to bring up the settings uh, window and then regardless of which uh, which settings the window is showing here go into this drop down menu and bring up you see there are three choices here uh, you got uh, you can assign to the remote pod function keys you can uh, assign uh, functions to the keypad 4 through 9 buttons or the keypad 0 through 3 buttons and in this selection it will also let you assign a function to the decimal point button you cannot uh, assign a function to the enter key. So we'll start with uh, uh, the function keys, which are these buttons here. And uh, so you can see I've already got these things assigned. And uh, so, for instance, uh, tunings. Oh, well, let's talk about something else first. So you see these other. Uh, items here. So first these uh, two fields. I don't know what they are. I've never used them. I've never looked them up in the help file. But if you want to know about them, uh, I'm sure you can click on the help and uh, that document will explain what these are. You can also use the software with other uh, tuning controls. And here you see a list. The Griffin PowerMate the flex control knob, the teammate 2, or this Behringer uh, MIDI controller. And then there's a, a selection here that says pod knob keys or toggles. Not quite sure what that is either because I've never used any of these other controls. So if you're using one of these, you know, uh, click that selection and then go to the help uh, document and it will tell you how to set the software up to use with, with those controls. If you leave them all unchecked, then it'll default to the 302 controller, and that's that's really all we're going to talk about. So um, again, so we go back up here to the function key settings. Now some of these, uh, well, okay, one more time, sorry. So let's look at the list of things that you can assign. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here, but let's look at the list of things that you can assign to these uh, buttons. And there's a long list, as you can see. So you can assign any of these functions to any button, and if you s if you set the uh, buttons up for the functions that you use most anyway, then you can almost operate the radio without ever taking your hand off of the uh, remote tuning encoder. Not totally, because there's always going to be something that you need to do that's not assigned to one of those buttons. But uh, you can you know. Uh, you can probably uh, do 80, 80 or 90 percent of what you do from the uh, remote tuning encoder uh, and then the rest of it you know use the mouse to, to to do what you need to do but there are a lot of uh, a lot of functions here so uh, what I was saying was uh, some of the uh, uh, functions use the knob and some don't and tuning steps for instance is one that does not use uh, the knob. So here are the tuning steps I have set up and then here is the tuning step that's selected and it's also uh, 
indicated here with the red uh, the function uh, description uh, showing in red so uh, keep an eye on this and keep an eye on this as I push uh, function key 1 and you'll see it just cycles through it'll go from 50 to 100 hertz to 1 kilohertz and then cycle back around and start going through them again so I push and it changed to 100 hertz push again 1 kilohertz then it'll go back to 1 hertz then 5 then 10 then 50 then so don't use the knob for that uh, you just push the button until your uh, desired selection is uh, is showing uh, a B toggle uh, doesn't really use the knob for that function it just toggles between VFO A and VFO B so if I push F2 then you can see uh, the VFOs changed and obviously I have the knob set up for VFO A so it'll tune VFO A if I turn the knob and you can see the pan adapter up here keeps up with it. I'm using an SDR Play RSP1 as my uh, second receiver slash uh, pan adapter uh, display but uh, F2 again just toggles between the two VFOs and then function key 3 will actually cause the knob to tune VFO B so if I push F3 you'll see VFO B up here and then as I turn the knob you'll see it's changing VFO B but it's not really doing anything since we're not in split mode this is really for when you're in split mode. We'll, we'll talk about that in a few minutes. And you can see the webcam is lagging a little bit. This is my old bargain basement webcam I've had for many years, so I appreciate you putting up with uh, kind of how slow it is up here. One of these days I'll get a better one, just haven't done it yet. Um, so, uh, and it's the same if you go down uh, for keys four through nine, you just uh, go through here and pick out what you want that button to do and then select it and you're, you're done. So none of this is real complicated. This, this video isn't so much to show you you know how to, how to do this as it is to sort of demonstrate how handy uh, the remote tuning control is because uh, otherwise you know you are doing things just through the mouse and pushing the buttons and then if you didn't have the knob you'd have to go here and if you left click uh, on your mouse key uh, button uh, you go down in frequency by the amount uh, of the selected tuning step if you right click then you go up in frequency by the amount uh, of your tuning step and then the same thing for VFOB now there's also a selection where it'll draw a depiction of an actual knob here and then you can put your cursor in the knob and there will be an arrow showing you whether you're tuning up or tuning down and you can kind of hold down the mouse button well, you can do that here too uh, but you know regardless of the software if I had a flex radio uh, if I had a software defined receiver of some sort you know whatever I had I would I would prefer a, a, a hardware knob to tune it with rather than tuning it through whatever the software is that goes with that radio uh, so uh, again so let's just keep going here and uh, so for instance uh, uh, numeric key 5 is filter tune so if I press the 5 key again you'll see it over here change to filter and then watch here and watch here as I uh, turn the knob to select narrower or wider uh, filters and you'll see as I come to a selection, so it's 3200 hertz, but I don't have a button assigned to 3200 hertz, and so other buttons are lit up. But as I go uh, wider, so if I go to 4 kilohertz, you'll see the uh, uh, writing in the, in the 4 kilohertz uh, button turns red. And then as I go out, uh, you know, so as long as I, as soon as the, the, the filter width hits, uh, one of the values that the buttons are assigned to they'll light up and then uh, um, what else
its volume and RF gain. So if I push number seven, it changes to volume. You see the volume slider go up and down. If I press number eight, changes to RF gain. You'll see the RF gain slider go up or down. So that that's really all it is. You 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 assign a value to a button, and then uh, if if it's a knob controlled function, then the knob will change the values for that function. And again, there's lots of selections here. Uh, whoop, wrong one. Uh, there's lots of selections you know, for these buttons. I'm not going to talk about all of these. We'd be here all day if I tried to explain all these. But the help file uh, does explain uh, all of all of the functions, and some of them are pretty handy. I mean, like I said, depending on what you like to do. Uh, but one of the things that I wanted to talk about specifically was uh, split mode and uh, select an assignment of the uh, remote tuning knob to one VFO or the other. So if we put the radio in split mode and we have the knob set for VFO A, then you'll see that VFO A is changing, but you'll see that uh, BFO B is not. You'll see that the the other receiver, the SDR play receiver, is now on VFO B. So, to me, this is useful. It 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 gives you a second receiver in my case, which is the RSP one. So if you uh, send the uh, uh, audio output of your uh, RSP1 through your computer sound card then you can listen to this receiver through the computer speakers and then you can listen to the Omni 7 through the Omni 7's uh, speaker so if you're if you're in my case uh, I don't wouldn't use that so much for split uh, DX operating but uh, maybe if I was uh, tuned up on a frequency uh, because I had a schedule with someone, you know, while I'm waiting for my uh, first, I'm waiting for to call me or waiting for time to call him. If I wanted to just tune up and down the band with the other receiver, you know, I could do that. Or if you're uh, uh, waiting on a net to start, you want to tune around the band a little bit with the other receiver, you can do that. So, um, so you you automatically when you're using uh, one of these external receivers that that uh, the N4PY software is talking to. As soon as you go into split mode, VFOB is for that other receiver. So if I then select function key 3, and now when I tune, you'll see uh, VFOB is tuning the uh, external receiver, and VFOA isn't moving. So if we go back and change the knob to control VFOA, then you'll see that the uh, VFOB isn't moving. So this is really handy. Uh, this this uh, split mode is really handy when you have uh, an external receiver like I do. And so you can use this, uh, you know, for split uh, chasing DX and operating split, or however you want to use it. Um, but I wanted to demonstrate this uh, specifically uh, just to show you. And then if you turn split off, uh, again, you're tuning VFOB, but it's not doing anything because uh, you're not in split mode anymore, so the VFOB is not controlling this receiver. And you'll also notice that, uh, so in split mode, it tunes to VFOB up here, and then when you're out of split mode, it tunes back to VFOA. So then you uh, push. I'll push function key or, or keypad button nine to go back to uh, the knob controlling VFOA, and now we're tracking again between the two receivers. So that's just one one particular function that I do use a lot. Uh, comes in really handy uh, with the with the remote tuning knob. Otherwise, uh, there's just not a lot to say about it. Uh, it's uh, I've looked at, I, I don't know if I said this before, I've looked at these 
and especially something like this Teammate 2. I think it has three knobs on it and a little its own little LCD display and just a lot of stuff uh, that, it, that it apparently can do. But you know what? Uh, for my style of operating, uh, using this one radio, the Omni 7, and this one piece of software, so that might be, if you want to call it a disadvantage, since this box plugs into the radio and not your computer, then this box is only ever going to work with a radio that supports it. And right now, as I said earlier, I think there are three. I believe these others, uh, control knobs, plug into the computer. So then they can work with any radio whose software supports that controller. Uh, I don't know if that's an advantage or disadvantage. For me, it doesn't matter much uh, because I only have uh, the Omni 7 and I only have the uh, RSP1. And I only use the RSP1 as a pan adapter for this radio. I don't really ever use it for, uh, 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 you know, on its own as just a, a general purpose receiver to listen to. So for my limited use, uh, this is fine. This, this, this scheme just works, works great for me. So I guess that's about it. Uh, I just wanted to, to create this little video just to show how useful this box is when the radio is under software control and especially when you're using another receiver as the pan adapter uh, it, it's uh, a friend of mine used to say handier than pockets on a shirt so uh, and that's how I sort of feel about it anyway uh, I guess I'll wind this one up that's about all I had to say about it uh, so thank you for watching I hope you found it uh, at least a little bit useful